Marcus Aurelius once stated, the soul becomes dyed with the color of its thoughts. A profound thought indeed, and one that offers a glimpse into the mind of the man himself. Born in the year 121 AD in the heart of Rome, Marcus Aurelius's early life was not unlike that of other noble Roman children of his time. However, a significant turning point came in the form of his tutor, Rusticus. It was Rusticus who first introduced young Marcus to the principles of Stoicism, a philosophy that would shape his thoughts, his actions, and indeed, his very soul. Stoicism, with its emphasis on virtue, duty, and acceptance, resonated deeply with Marcus and soon became the bedrock of his life. Little did the young Marcus know that these principles would guide him not only in his personal life, but also in his future role as the leader of the Roman Empire. These early experiences shaped Aurelius into the man who would become a renowned philosopher and the emperor of Rome. The young Aurelius found himself thrust into power, not by choice, but by a twist of fate. Indeed, Marcus Aurelius, a man of profound introspection and philosophical inclination, was called to lead the Roman Empire at the ripe age of 40. Aurelius, however, was no stranger to duty. From a young age, he had been schooled in the Stoic philosophy that taught the importance of self-discipline, personal ethics, and a devotion to duty above all else. It was these principles that he drew upon when he ascended to the throne, taking on the mantle of an empire that stretched from the sun-kissed coasts of Spain to the windswept steppes of Eastern Europe. Despite his initial reluctance, Aurelius accepted the throne as his duty, a task bestowed upon him by the cosmos itself. He did not lust for power, nor did he seek to exploit it for personal gain. Instead, he saw it as a means to serve his people, to uphold justice, and to ensure the stability and prosperity of the empire. His reign was marked by a deep sense of responsibility and justice. He was a fair and just ruler, known for his wisdom and equanimity. Despite the immense power he held, he never let it corrupt his judgment or his character. He was a philosopher on the throne, using his position to promote the principles he held dear. Aurelius was a firm believer in the Stoic principle of accepting one's fate with grace and dignity. He believed that every event, every circumstance was a part of the divine plan of the cosmos. And so he accepted his ascension to power, not as a burden, but as a duty, a responsibility to serve his people and his empire. Even as he sat on the throne of the most powerful empire of the time, Aurelius never lost sight of his philosophical roots. His reign was not marked by grand monuments or lavish feasts, but by a deep commitment to justice, duty and the stoic principles that guided his life. Emperor Aurelius, despite the power he wielded, never lost sight of his philosophical roots. A true testament to the power of stoic philosophy, Aurelius serves as a shining beacon of how one can wield power with grace, wisdom and a deep commitment to duty. Aurelius once noted, very little is needed to make a happy life. It is all within yourself, in your way of thinking. This adage was not just a mental exercise for Marcus Aurelius, but a philosophy he implemented in his reign as the Roman Emperor. As a Stoic, Aurelius believed in the power of the mind, the importance of self-governance, and the ability to accept fate. This formed the backbone of his rule, shaping his decisions and policies. His reign was not about ostentatious power or grandeur, but about wisdom, integrity, and the well-being of his people. Aurelius held firmly to the belief that a leader's role was not merely to rule, but also to serve. He saw his position as a responsibility rather than a privilege, a duty to his people and the empire he governed. This mindset was a stark contrast to many leaders of his time, and even today who see power as an end in itself. This sense of responsibility was deeply rooted in his Stoic philosophy. Stoicism teaches acceptance of the world as it is, not as we wish it to be. Aurelius applied this principle to his governance, understanding that he could not control everything, but he could control his response to it. He also believed in the importance of constant self-improvement, another key tenet of Stoicism. Aurelius, despite his position, was never complacent. He continually sought to better himself both as a leader and as a person, reflecting on his actions, learning from his mistakes, and striving to act with virtue and wisdom. 
His acceptance of fate, another cornerstone of Stoicism, allowed him to face adversity with calm and resilience. Whether it was wars, plagues or betrayals, Aurelius faced them all with stoic acceptance, believing that every event in life, good or bad, is an opportunity to learn and grow. Marcus Aurelius was not just a philosopher in thought, but also in action. His reign is a testament to the power of philosophy when applied to real life, showing that wisdom and virtue are not just concepts to be discussed, but principles to be lived by. In the silence of his private quarters, Aurelius penned his thoughts, crafting what is known today as the Meditations. This private journal, never intended for public eyes, is a profound exploration of the human condition, a reflection of a mind sharpened by power and softened by wisdom. The Meditations serve as a mirror to Aurelius's soul, revealing the inner workings of one of history's greatest emperors. At the heart of Aurelius's philosophy is the acceptance of death but not a fearful, trembling acceptance, rather a calm recognition of death as a natural part of life. He wrote, Death, like birth, is a secret of nature. It's a viewpoint that can liberate us from the paralysis of fear, allowing us to live fully and freely. Equally important in Marcus Aurelius's philosophy is the concept of living in the present moment. He famously advised, Do not disturb yourself by picturing your life as a whole. Instead, bring your attention back to the present moment. It's a call to us all to stop dwelling on the past or obsessing over the future, but to live, truly live, in the here and now. The meditations also highlight Aurelius' belief in universal connectedness. He saw the world as a unified entity where every action impacts the whole. What we do now echoes in eternity, he wrote. It's a reminder of our interconnectedness and the ripple effects of our actions, a call to live with intention and integrity. Aurelius's meditations are not just philosophical musings. They are a practical guide to living a meaningful life, a life of integrity and purpose. They remind us that we are part of something larger, that our actions matter, and that death ultimately is not to be feared. The meditations serve as a testament to the timeless wisdom of Marcus Aurelius. They are as relevant today as they were nearly 2,000 years ago, reminding us that even in the midst of power and responsibility, we can live with wisdom, courage and compassion. Marcus Aurelius, ever the Stoic, met his end as he had lived his life, with acceptance and calm. In the year 180 AD, the esteemed Emperor of Rome drew his last breath. His departure was not marked by fear or despair, but with the same tranquility and equanimity that had characterized his life. Marcus Aurelius, the philosopher king, embraced his mortality with the same stoic resolve that he had applied to every facet of his existence. His life was a testament to the stoic principle that we cannot control the world around us, only our reactions to it. Death to him was but another event in the grand tapestry of existence, to be met not with dread but with understanding and acceptance. His final days were not spent in lament but in reflection, his thoughts perpetually directed towards the betterment of his soul and the welfare of his empire. His stoic teachings, inscribed in his personal writings, now known as the Meditations, provided him with the fortitude to face the inevitable with grace and dignity. The legacy Marcus Aurelius left behind was profound. His stoic philosophy, so eloquently expressed in his meditations, continues to resonate with people today, offering guidance on how to lead a virtuous and meaningful life. His teachings remind us to value the present, to act with justice, and to meet adversity with resilience. They underscore the idea that we are part of a larger whole, interconnected and interdependent, and that our actions ripple out influencing the world around us. Marcus Aurelius, the last of the five good emperors, may have departed from this world, but his wisdom endures. His life serves as a beacon, guiding us towards a path of virtue, understanding and acceptance. His stoic philosophy, a powerful reminder of our capacity to shape our own reality through our thoughts and actions. Marcus Aurelius's life and philosophy continue to inspire, a testament to the power of a mind steeped in Stoicism. His teachings, his wisdom, his Stoic resolve all serve as a beacon to those seeking to navigate the turbulent waters of existence. 
His legacy is a testament to the power of a mind steeped in Stoicism, a beacon of light in an often chaotic world. To Aurelius, life was not to be feared, but to be lived fully, every moment savoured, every lesson learned. This is the essence of his philosophy, a call to embrace life with open arms, to accept death as an inevitable part of our existence. Marcus Aurelius, the Stoic philosopher and Roman emperor, taught us to live in the present, to cherish each moment as if it were our last. His teachings go beyond mere acceptance of mortality. They are a roadmap to finding happiness within oneself. To Aurelius, happiness was not an external treasure to be sought, but an internal state to be cultivated. It was about understanding ourselves, our desires and our fears, and using this knowledge to lead a full and meaningful life. Marcus Aurelius' words continue to inspire us, to challenge us, to remind us of the beauty and brevity of life. In the words of Marcus Aurelius, waste no more time arguing what a good man should be, be one.